Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about that Hollywood strike. We're going to talk about some updates. Uh, apparently, the studios are hopeful that they can salvage the 2024 and 2025 box offices. So there's yeah. that. Yeah. There's that. We'll talk about that. But I wanted to talk about how everybody seems to be gunning for Fran Drescher now. Yeah, and then when you hear what she does at these at these meetings, it's weird. It's just weird. Yeah, so it's interesting because, you know, the version of the story we got was that, like, George Clooney and company were going to uh, try to offer up, you know, a bigger percentage of their their uh, take to SAG-AFTRA to stop the strikes. And it sounds like the meeting was more about a bunch of A-listers questioning Fran Drescher mm -hmm. and her methods. And uh, a lot of people thinking Fran Drescher is a Fruit Loop, and that this is uh, she's not the one to be leading. But she doesn't need to emulate strike. male energy to be an effective leader. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. So let's let's talk about that, and we're going to talk about you know the, all the productions that, uh, regardless of you know where you're at with the strike, all the productions that have have been uh, uh, going on despite the, the strike. Remember when you're told you're not allowed to dress up for Halloween, you're not allowed yes. to talk about uh, Struck Studios or whatever. Well, you're not allowed like, to be, you don't even have to be in the union, but you're never gonna be in the union if you don't do what we say. Yeah, but there are all these movies, all these TV shows are being produced currently. Look at this list, oh my God. Yeah. All these people are working, they're cutting side deals with the actors union. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, so let's, let's talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com. Help support Shadowbinders Volume 3. It's coming next summer. Uh, we're working on it currently. This is the third volume of the Shadowbinders saga, and it's the first that will have all new material that will be print exclusive. I'm very excited about this one because um, this is one of my favorite chapters that I worked on is in this book. So, yeah, go out and back that, guys. Uh, it's not going to ship until next summer, but uh, we need to know you're interested. We need to know you're interested in it. So let's um, let's talk about all this. I guess first we'll talk about uh, where we're at with the strike, and then we'll talk about the backlash over uh, Fran Drescher. So okay. we just saw this one. SAG After Strike Studios prepare a new offer in hopes of salvaging the 2024 and 2025 box office according to Variety. So things are pretty bad. They said uh, Paramount announced it was postponing the next Mission Impossible from June 2024 to May 2025. Mm -hmm. We're going to start pricing a lot more of this. That's not good. That's like a year. And this is after we saw a bunch of movies get moved from 2023 to 2024, including Dune 2 and some other stuff. Yeah. Um, so they said that uh, Iger had a call, I guess. Uh, he called SAG after his top negotiator, Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, on Saturday to invite the actors back to the bargaining table. And it lifted the spirits of SAG after leadership. We got yeah, the wind at our their, backs. It lifted their spirits, and then they're going to go in there and fuck it up somehow again. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what happened, guys, uh, for those of you who don't know. I said the talks broke down on October 11th after the union proposed a 57 cent per subscriber fee on all streaming platforms, which would cost the studios roughly 500 million a year. Uh, Amp or some places say it was a dollar. It depends who you ask. Uh, yeah, the, some places said it was a dollar. They said it was 57 cents. Amp Tips said that would present an untenable economic burden. And uh, Fran Drescher argued that a dramatic transformation in the entertainment business model requires a dramatically improved compensation structure. But they structure. got that. They already got they that. They did. They already got huge gains across the board on, on everything, including AI, you know, and all that. And they got better health care benefits, and they got more money for people. They even got people who normally don't get residuals getting residuals. Huge, huge strides. And then they, at the last minute, they decided, well, we want more. Yeah, and I, I believe this was uh, Fran Drescher and Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, that kind of blindsided them with this this thing, right? They said they're expected to present a new offer Tuesday, which be today. Um, it's believed to be a substantial improvement over the earlier proposal. But here, and this is, is going to segue into it. They said in the studio side, there's hope, if not optimism, that a deal can be reached soon. The CEOs have been frustrated with Drescher, who has... Uh, talked in the negotiating room about income disparity and her ambition to transform actors' lives. So just remember, this 57 cents or dollar, whatever that is, that's going to sag after, and they basically get to dole it out however How they, they feel, want to. yeah. And that's weird. Uh, that's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, so there was this, this uh, talk with 
George Clooney and some other A-listers. And it sounds to me like they were trying to salvage the situation. I thought they were going in there to just offer up part of their salaries or whatever to, to get this to end. And that's not the full story. The full story is they're basically not real happy with Fran Drescher. Yeah, I'm shocker. shocker. And, I'm not surprised by this at all. And this is after uh, this is after Half Pint, uh, Melissa Gilbert trashed the SAG after a Halloween guidelines. Well, they were they, stupid. They, it was really stupid. They're like, yeah, you can't dress up as struck characters, guys. You can't dress up as struck characters. But hey, uh, look at all these movies that we're cutting side deals for that mm -hmm. are in production right now. You can't dress up as Halloween characters. But uh, we're going to cut but deals for all these. those are our unstruck these. studios. <laughs> yeah. But they're all going to wind up on Netflix or something anyway, right? Right. Most of them probably, yes. They'll probably wind up on Netflix or streaming service or something, you know? So, yeah. Uh, anyway, Fran sounds a bit un... Loopy? Loopy. And look, I, I like Fran Dre I do like Fran Drescher overall. Uh, but yeah, I think she's kind of the one that's out of touch with reality because there are a lot of below the line workers. And Melissa Gilbert went out of her way when she was trashing Fran Drescher to say, like, I see you. I know you guys are hurting. You know, this is silly that we're spending all of our time talking about stupid Halloween costumes and there are people literally losing their houses. Right. Mostly below the line workers who don't even have a dog in this fight. You know, but that's you okay. Can... They'd like to threaten people without dogs in the fight, including, you know, influencers. So here, here's what the take from the Hollywood reporter is on the the meeting. They said last week a group include that included Ben Affleck, Jennifer Aniston, George Clooney, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, Laura Dern, Scarlett Johansson, Tyler Perry, Ryan Reynolds. Ah. I didn't know he was involved. That mm -hmm. explains it because he Tyler was Tyler Perry just got a Netflix first look offer too. Yes. Emma Stone, Meryl Streep, Kerry Washington, Reese Witherspoon. Ryan Reynolds was the one who kind of led the charge against the, the Halloween costume mm -hmm. thing too. They said that they were growing increasingly alarmed and frustrated as to whether union negotiators were doing everything they could to reach a deal and they decided to present a unified front. These major union members had several Zoom meetings with SAG after leaders Crabtree Ireland and Fran Drescher to discuss getting back to the table. Some had already had one-on-one -on -one conversations with union leaders but decided to go a step further and work together to attempt to break through the stalemate. Basically, the A-listers are saying they don't have faith in union leadership. They're trying to get, you know, break through the stalemate, but they're not talking, they're not at the studio saying it, they're talking to them. Yep. Like, you know, like they think they're the reason for the stalemate. But then what's really weird was what they described what Fran was doing. They said before the talks had broken off, sources say that four CEOs who attended SAG after negotiations had been taken aback by Drescher's negotiating style, which involved bringing a heart-shaped plush toy with a smiley face doll given to her by 11-year-old fan and saying Buddhist inspirational quotes. She also alarmed the CEOs when she proclaimed, I don't care if we're here for a year in order to achieve the union's end source Sources maintain, which oh a union God. source denies. A source close to the union explains that Drescher uses less contentious bargaining processes and tries to bring the tone down in the room on occasion. She doesn't need to emulate male energy to be an effective leader. Here's the thing, Fran. A lot of women are effective leaders. And leadership qualities are not, you know, predominantly male. You know, saying this is bullshit and being tough and fighting back and actually, you know, trying to get the job done doesn't mean you have a dick. So I, I just want to I just want to put this out there again. Melissa Gilbert was the head of SAG AFTRA for like four or five years. Her boobies are hanging out. Oh yeah, her her boobs are hanging. Out. She didn't need men. She didn't need men's power to, to get what she wanted. <laughs> just ju just saying, and she was one of the biggest critics of Fran Drescher. She's like, "What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing?" And half of the actors who went to this meeting were women. Yeah, and they were like, "What the hell are you doing?" Mm -hmm. So this explains a lot. So this explains why she kind of chastised George Clooney. This explains why Ryan Reynolds, because he would have gone to that meeting before he made his comments on Twitter about the Halloween costume thing. Mm -hmm. This explains why they're saying the things they're saying. This might explain why Melissa Gilbert's getting involved because they might've gone back to her and said, Hey, you know, when you're in charge, things weren't batshit crazy like they are now. We need a leader and she's not doing it. Wait, wait. So Dasher opened the first zoom meeting with the aid listers, by asking to take a screenshot the sources close to the union maintain that Drescher wanted to take a screenshot in order to preserve the historic moment in the life of the union. If after collects the history of this union as part of his general operations, Perry politely declined, expressing he would prefer to get down to business. I am with him. Well, other people were talking. They said that they're that they're more worried about their legacy than they are about fixing the problem. 
Yeah, SAG after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this is gonna be a historic moment. We're gonna change everything. I, my thought process on this is, you might be changing things for the worse. You might just make it so much easier for the studios to be like, yeah, we don't want to deal with the union mm -hmm. anymore. Or it's they're going to be ass. like, okay, we're getting all this stuff, but we're going to be, we're, we're, we already know they're going to cut half the productions down. So you guys are getting all this stuff, but only people that are left are going to get it. Yeah. I mean, this is, they're, they're saying that people are taking pot shots at her because, because she's a woman according to Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. I'm like, well, no, I think she has more balls than Duncan Crabtree, Ireland. So there's that. I mean, I think she's, she's, she's tougher than he is. So this is what this is basically what happened. So none of the actors on the call suggested this was a magic bullet or anything. That the you know them giving up a larger portion mm -hmm. of their you know because they have a cap on it, like a million dollars or whatever. Uh, they said or nothing even resembling a solution. Said one person who participated. The source added it was proposed as an outside the box conversation starter because inside the box isn't currently working for either side of the negotiation. The meetings with SAG after leaders left this person feeling abject frustration and several of the a-list actors said they came out of those conversations concerned well it's interesting here it says actors also began working in their studio con working in their studio contract seeking to persuade them to return to the bargaining and ask them how they could help get both parties back to the table some of these high, high profile performers are also major producers at the same time the actors were working in their studio relationship some began channeling their frustrations into a draft of a letter expressing concerns about sag's leadership wow and then over the weekend the news broke of sag and amp tip getting back to the bargaining table so it sounds to me like the only reason they're getting back to the bargaining table is the actors took matters into their own hands and they're like we got it like that was a good offer and you turn it down and, and then sag says oh it's because we were united it doesn't sound like they're united to me. It sounds like the actors are like, okay, Fran Drescher's out to lunch. Uh-huh. Let's freaking do it. Talking I mean, to her damn doll. She's saying Brutus quotes to her damn doll. <laughs> just, you you know? know, yeah. I mean, she does seem and like she's Dawkins completely out there saying, Stop picking on her. She's a woman. And you've got Melissa Gilbert jumping down her throat too. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, we, like all these people are out of work. You turn down a damn good offer. And you're out there flitting around, making statements or whatever, and you're putting a damn Halloween thing out there. And again, the first person to line up to take a pot shot was Ryan Reynolds, who was in the meeting, who I didn't know was in the meeting. This explains a well, lot. Funny this thing explains too. a lot. You see the list of the the list of the, of the celebrities who were involved in this and talking to the studios and trying to get them to go back in and stuff. A lot of them women. If they don't listen to women, and if women, you know, you can't you can't negotiate like men. How come they were in there getting it done? Yeah. Yeah, because this is all their asses on the line. This is uh, all the people that work for them. Their asses are on the line. And Fran Drescher's just kind of out there like... Loop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, a lot of them are women. Like half of them are women. They got it done. They got it done. Just saying. So it sounds like they're just doing an end run around Fran Drescher at this point. Effective leadership isn't, isn't by gender, Fran. That's an excuse. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so this is Melissa Gilbert again. Because they're saying Tuesday, they think they're going to get another another chance. But that's uh, today. Yep. Uh, I'm watching very closely as negotiations move forward, says Melissa Gilbert. I'm incredibly hopeful that our union will walk away with a deal that will benefit our membership and everyone in our industry who is suffering mightily will be able to get back to work. Again, it's not just the actors, not just the writers. They seem to think it's all about them, but there are a lot of other people that are out of work mm -hmm. who got caught up in this, who didn't ask to be caught up in this. And uh, as everybody's out there being a freaking show pony, you know, like, oh, my God, guys, we're only getting $10,000 a week. Can you imagine? That's that's poor people money. I know. <laughs> I know, right? You know, as somebody's like, you know, having their house foreclosed on or whatever. It's like, geez, they're probably like, shut the hell up. So there we go. Um, interesting, uh, interesting term of events. Uh, you know, by the time you watch this video, who knows, they might have gotten another uh, offer. But. It sounds like they're all pissed off at Fran Drescher at this point. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.